Hello and welcome to this power session over linear equations with Mama L. At the end of today's session you should be able to understand what linear equations are, identify the types of linear equations, identify the parts of linear equations, and graph linear equations. So we're dealing with real stuff when we talk about linear equations. Believe it or not, we can represent complicated equations visually. Today we will see pictures of our math answers, okay? So I really try to, to get my students to make that connection with when we're putting in an X and a Y, we're putting a point on a graph, if we connect those points, we're seeing a picture of all the potential answers lined up so close that you can't even tell. There's an infinite number of points on those lines, and every one of them would be a potential answer to our equation. So what do you see when you look at this word, linear? Okay, when I ask my students that, a lot of times I'll hear, oh, ear or in. Okay, but the word I want you to see is linear, line in linear, right? We're making lines of our answers. So in this real world example, let's take a look. A cleaning service has a monthly service charge of $25 and an hourly charge of $15 for every hour of cleaning provided. The total monthly cost is gonna be the hourly charge plus the service mean basic charge of $25. So let's write an equation to represent the situation. Well the result of having a $25 charge plus $15 an hour is going to be right here. Okay, And this is called our output. Our x is called our input because that's the thing that we change. Okay, We have an x axis and a y axis and that x axis is going to tell us you know how many um, how many hours we're working so that's going to be the input and we're going to be changing the amount that we pay for hourly costs and then we're always going to have that $25 be the same each time okay so the question is what would the monthly cost of cleaning the service of the cleaning service be if we're doing four hours okay well if we did 15 times one hour that would be 20 that would be $40 right if we did two hours of cleaning, we changed our input, our output would have a different result, right? 15 times 2 is 30 plus 25 is 55. If we did four hours like they're asking, okay, well, $15 times four hours, let's add 25 to that, and 15 times 4 is 60 plus 25, and our answer is $85. That's how much it would cost. When a table of values is made, okay, if we made a table showing the 1 is 40, when we plugged in 2 hours, we got 55, 4 hours is 85, we could plug in 10 hours or 100 hours and see what those would look like, right? The line can be used that you make with all those different points to determine the monthly cost for any number of hours of service. All right, and as I said before, your X is always your input. That's what you start with, and your Y is always your result, your output. And just think of those two different axes as number lines, and so that's how we get those points, okay? The points, like I said, 1, 40, 2, 55. We said when we put in 4 hours, it was 85, right? If we had put in 10 hours, 10 times 15 is 150 plus the $25 base base fee is going to be 175. Okay. Now the graph on the right is too small for me to do that, but if I went over 1, up 40, and made a dot, and over 2, up 55, and over 4, up 85, and I start connecting those dots, they're going to make a nice straight line for me. That will help me be able to predict different amounts of hours if I wanted to keep stretching that line out. All right. So your relationship of x to y is going to tell you what your line looks like. This lesson is all about linear or straight lines that we're dealing with, but other, other relationships between x and y aren't as boring and predictable, right? Sometimes we're going to get curved lines on our graphs. Sometimes we're going to get two angled lines, kind of like that. Okay, it's going to be different depending on the equation, depending on the relationship that your x has to your y. Sometimes you'll be asked to do a problem like this where they'll say, all right, if you're so smart, let's show you the points and ask you to fill in the missing pieces. So you have to look for that relationship between x and y. You might look at this first one and say, oh, 2 and then 10. Hmm, maybe we add 8 every time. Well, 4 plus 8 is 12, so it's not going to be that relationship. You'd say, well, you could also say 2 times 5 is 10. Well, 4 times 5 is going to be 20, so that matches up. So what number times 5 is 25? 5. 10 times 5, then once we figure that relationship out, is 50. If I were to plot these points, 2, 10, 420, 525, and 1050, they would make a perfectly straight line. So you need to be able to look for those relationships. 
Okay, so what does the equation look like? You know, these equations are supposed to help us. Well, the equations can be in many different formats, but the most common one is this. Okay, we've got three that we're going to talk about today, and this one I'll show you in just a second. Okay, our three forms are number one, standard form. And in standard form, you just have some number of x's plus some number of y's equals a plain number. Slope intercept form, you have y equaling some number of x's plus a plain number this way. Okay, and that's called your slope and your intercept, hence the name. And then finally, point slope form, you're going to be plugging in one point, okay, in these second, in your second x's and y's, okay. That's going to be where you put your points. So like if my point was 1, 2, my x was 1, my y was 2. That's how you plug in those points. And then your slope, again, is m. So let's take a closer look at those, okay? You could start with any of the three forms and use the information to create and rearrange things to get any of the other three forms, okay? You have the ability of, as a mathematician to do some rearranging, following the rules of math, and getting it to the form that works best for you, okay? They will all get you to a picture of all the values that x and y could be. So if you plug in x, you're going to get this y every time. If you plug in this x, you're going to get that y every time. And if you start plotting those points, you're making a picture of your answers. Since you have some options, use the form that matches what you have, okay? So is the problem simple enough to find the intercepts? Usually that's standard form. Or maybe you know the slope and the intercept. Slope intercept form would be pretty good for that, right? Do you know the point on the a point on the line to the sometimes the problem will say, oh we've got this point and this slope. What's the equation? Well use point slope form for that one. Okay, so standard form, again, remember it's your number of x's plus your number of y's equals a plain old number. So you could have something like, oh, okay, well, 3x plus 4y equals 12. Okay, remember, number of x's, number of y's, plain number right there. Okay, if you wanted to quickly find your intercepts, all that means is finding where your line, where your picture of your answers is intercepting with your x axis and your y axis. So if I wanted to say, oh, well, if I plugged in 0 for x, 3 times 0 is 0, that's so easy, right? Plus 4 times a number equals 12. Oh, well, y has to be 3. So when x was 0, y was 3. Then you could find your y-intercept. You could say, oh, okay, well, 3x plus 4 times 0 here. So when my y is 0, what's my x going to be? Well, 3 times 4, right? 3 times 4 would give me 12. So x would have to be 4 because 4 times 0 would be adding 0 right there, okay? So you just found your intercepts where your line would cross on your x-axis and your y-axis. So that's standard form, and that can be pretty handy to have. Slope intercept form, our most commonly used form, okay? This one is if you know the slope and you know the intercept, okay? Well, slope is how far, how far up and how far down your line goes, or how steep it is. Imagine if you're a skier, like this picture, okay? If it's a really steep slope, you're going to be skiing down really fast, or maybe skiing up a really high slope. Think of the slope as left to right. So you're going to be looking left to right. If it goes up, it's a positive slope. If it goes down, it's a negative slope. Okay, if it's a really steep slope, right, it's going to be a little bit of a higher number, and a really um, shallow slope is probably going to be a, like a fraction. Okay, so um, you can get fractions that represent any whole numbers, but the slope is going to really determine what your line, how your line is angled. Okay, then you have your intercept, and just like a football interception where one guy might get in front of another player and intercept and grab the ball, we're intercepting with our y axis. Then we need to know that the slope, just remember, is always about the change in the height over the change in the length. So if I have two points here, and I want to know, okay, what's the difference between this point and this point? Okay, this might be negative 2, uh, let's make it negative 2, positive 1, and this might be positive 2, maybe 6, okay? You're just looking at the space of the up-down movement over the left-right movement. Slope has always been really confusing to my students, but if you understand that basic idea that we're just looking at the difference, how you might tell someone to get around on a map, right? Well, go north this much and then maybe go east this much. Just do your uh, north-south movement over your east-west movement, right? So you might have to just subtract your numbers. Well, 2 minus negative 2 
Okay, that's that's your left right movement. That's going to be on the bottom. Two minus negative two. That's actually if I do keep change change is four. Okay, my y's are going to be now. Remember, if I started with this point, I have to stick with that point. Six minus one. Well, six minus one is going to be five. So my slope is five fourths there. Okay. And it makes sense. It's a positive slope. It's going up five over four, up five over four from one point to the next. So just remember, it's just an up down movement over the left right movement. Okay. It's a little tricky because we've been so trained to think x y x y x y. Okay. Now we're doing y's on top. We have to do y's first, and then our x's. Now notice I did my x's first, but I remembered to put them down there on the bottom. Okay, and then remember where your line crosses the y-axis, and remember this up-down one. That's your that hor that vertical one. Excuse me, is your y-axis. So if that's your line, if that's a picture of all your answers. Your y-intercept is going to be right there. Maybe that's positive one, or maybe you had this line right here, and that might be negative three. Okay, well that'll determine if your intercept is plus one or minus three at the back of your equation. Okay. The third form we have is point slope form. This is when you've been given a point and a slope, right? So you just plug those in. In fact, if you notice, if you're looking carefully, you might see that the um, the equation is if you have your changes in y's over your changes in x. If I were to multiply both sides of my equation by x minus x, I would rearrange it to be point slope form. Okay. But when you do this, make sure that the point that they give you is plugged in back here. And it can be a little tricky when those are negatives. Like if I had the point 2, negative 3, well, my x is 2, so I'm going to put a 2 right here. So this is just x minus 2. And my y was negative 3. So y minus negative 3, keep change, change, is y plus 3. Okay? So watch out for those negative signs. That's what throws a lot of students off when they're dealing with point slope form. All right, so I like to think of it this way. Yes, it's corny, I know, but think of it like a pirate is trying to tell you <laughs> where his treasure is, and he wants to give you a map, okay? And that map is going to be a line that, that shows you how to get to his treasure, okay? So you have to start at the right point, and then once you're at that starting point, you have to go up and over, up and over, up and over, or maybe down and over, down and over, down and over, okay? So that's going to be your slope. You're going to have your intercept is your starting point, and then your slope from that point, not zero, zero, not the origin on your on your coordinate grid, okay? That, that point that he gives you, from there you use the slope to make more points, and then put it down, and make another point and you just start to connect your dots. Okay, so the, his secret code is y equals mx plus b. This is our slope intercept form and our starting point, even though it's at the back of our equation, that's going to be where we start on our coordinate grid. Okay, from there you use the slope to build the next point and then the next point and the next point. All right, so let's take a look at some of these examples. Okay, this one says what's the slope. So sometimes you're just going to simply have to identify different parts of the equation. Well, remember y equals mx plus b. Your m, right, that's your slope. So m is negative 5. Now, sometimes you could think of that as being in fraction form as negative 5 over 1. That's perfectly fine. Same answer. What's your intercept? Well, in this case, your intercept. There's your b right back there. In this case, it's negative, so your your slope. It, don't go ahead and put three. You need to make sure you have negative three for your y-intercept. Okay. And then where do you start? Remember the pirate. Where do you start? Do you start at your slope or your intercept? You start at your intercept. So you'd be starting at eight, or excuse me, positive eight on that coordinate grid. Okay, so not only do you have to identify those things, you have to graph them, right? So your starting point is positive two, right here and your slope is negative 5, or like I said before, it could be negative 5 over 1, right? So from that point, not the origin, okay? From that point right there, you go down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 1, and make a point. And keep going from that point, down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 1. And then you connect them to make your line, hopefully with a straight edge. This one, we have a different starting point, negative 3, right down here and then 4 or 4 over 1 is our slope so from that blue point we go up 4 1 2 3 4 over 1 1 2 3 4 over 1 
Okay, some students get confused and they think they're supposed to start from that origin, but make sure you start from the correct starting point or the pirate will be mad. Okay, this one, starting point of negative five, way down here, and then I'm going to go up one over two, up one over two, up one over two. Remember that our slope, if it's positive, it's going to go up to the right. So this is a positive one half, that's good. All right, now we're going to have to work backwards as well. Write the equation. Well, this is the format we want to do it in. Y equals mx plus b, where b is our starting point. Well, look, here's where our, our line crosses our y-axis. That's negative 2, so it's going to be minus 2. From there, we want to find another point where it perfectly crisscrosses that, the black lines. So right here is a nice crisp um, place where our lines are pretty obvious. So we go up 1. Remember, rise over run. Oh, what fun up one over three. So one third is my slope. And there's my equation right there. Right here, okay, again I'm going to write in my slope intercept form. Three is my starting point, positive three, and then from there it looks like right here is another good point. Down one over two, down one over two, down one over two. So negative one over two. Now it would be okay, it's the same thing to have negative 1 over 2, to have 1 over negative 2, or you could have the negative sign out in front. They're all the same thing, okay, they're going to all get you that slope of negative 1 half. Now this one you might say, oh I've got this down Mrs. Landers, I can do it, but wait, that's not in slope intercept form, what am I supposed to do? Well, get it in slope intercept form. Make sure that your y is positive and alone, then you have an equal sign, then your x is some amount of x's, that's what your m represents, some number of x's, and then all your plain numbers right here, okay? So don't just think of these strictly as slope and y-intercept, think of them as the number of x's and then the plain numbers at the end, okay? So they have x plus 4y equals 8. Well, I already have y on the left, that's good, but there are four of them, and we're adding x. So let's start by taking away the weaker bonds, like I, I like to say. Can't divide by 4 yet, or if you did it would be a little more complicated. Okay, 4y now, and then I, remember you want your x's first after the equal sign and then your plain numbers. So I could put 8 minus x, but it's better to put negative x and positive 8. You're allowed to switch the order, just don't forget to take the signs with them. Okay, positive 8, negative x. Now I'm going to go ahead and divide by 4. When you divide to simplify an equation, you divide each term or each chunk of that problem. So right here, y is now positive and alone, yes. And this is negative x over 4 or negative 1x, right, over 4. And you can just put that x off to the side. It's negative 1 fourth as a slope. And then 8 divided by 4 is 2. So there you go. If you want to graph it, your starting point is 2, and then you go down 1 over 4, down 1 over 4, and so on, and make your line. Then you might get asked something like this. A line passes through the point 3, negative 2, and has a slope of 2. Find the equation of the line. All right, remember point slope form, right? Okay, I'm going to write it down. y minus y equals your slope times x minus x, and remember you're plugging it in here. So your x is 3, your y is negative 2, but remember y minus negative 2 equals m times x minus positive 3. Okay, so when you have y minus negative 2, keep, change, change, oops, that didn't look very good. Now it's just plain old y plus 2. And then your slope is 2, 2 times x minus 3. They told you your slope is 2. So let's go ahead and distribute. That's 2 times x, 2x, and 2 times negative 3, negative 6. So I'm really close to getting slope intercept form, right? I just want to get that y all alone, remember? So I'm going to subtract away that 2, I'm going to do it on the right side as well, to keep everything nice and balanced. y equals 2x. And then negative 6 minus 2, okay, you could either keep, change, change, and say, oh, I got two negatives. That's more negative. It's negative 8. Okay, or you could think of it as you lost $6, then you lost two more dollars, right? So negative 6, take away two more is negative 8. 
and there's your point slope form or your slope intercept form. So you took the information you had, you put it in point slope form and manipulated it to be slope intercept form. And once it's in this form, you could easily graph it if they wanted you to. All right, that's it. Thanks for coming today. I really appreciate it. And hopefully you'll come and see some of my other sessions on other nonlinear equations. Have a great day. Bye.